Hey everyone, it's Thursday the 11th of July and it's 20 past 8 in the evening. Now this video could get quite long because I've got quite a lot I want to get through. Um, I've got some good news to tell you. Um, my Chinese leeway moped is doing something quite funky at the minute and I'm not sure why. <laughs> but I don't think I can leave it like that so I'm going to have to do something about it. Um, I've also got two barricade lamps down here that I bought last week. Um, a work lamp um, that belonged to one of our British utility companies. I've got another barricade lamp here I just want to quickly talk about because I've made something for it. I believe I've already shown it on the channel because I got it at car boot sale quite recently. And then I've got a bunch of die cast um, on this desk to show you all I picked up yesterday afternoon um, most of it is from the die cast guy except three models which I got separately on Facebook marketplace um, while I was picking those up from the die cast guy he actually gave me a box of free die cast as well there's nothing brilliant in it as I've got a box full here that I'm going to keep because I've been through the box already so I've got stuff here to keep stuff on the floor to go to charity and about eight vehicles down here I'm going to put in my scrap box right so let's just get stuck into the video shall we um, so let's get the chatty bits out of the way with shall we so we'll start with the good news and then I'll tell you what my moped is doing um, so the good news you might think it's going to start off as bad news, but it's not, so just trust me, okay? So, early hours of Monday morning, about 4am, uh, my sister's waters broke. Um, so, her boyfriend, you know, bundled her up, and then got in the car, and then drove to the hospital. Um, well, she had some contractions which obviously subsided and then at 2.53 a.m. Tuesday morning I became an uncle to a niece um, she was born a month early according, according to my sister exactly one month early so she's a little bit premature um, but all things considered, everything's been rather minor. Um, I mean, baby does have a little bit of jaundice and they couldn't get the body temperature up so they've had to put her under a heat lamp. I don't know if she's still there, that's what I was told this morning, you know, she may have warmed up and they may have taken her out of the heat lamp now. Um, although last I heard from my sister's boyfriend, you know, that the nurse said the baby was looking a lot better. So, um, I mean, it wasn't you know, a straightforward pregnancy at all because my sister has some um, lifelong illnesses, an autoimmune disease which causes a lot of problems for her. Um, so, yeah, there was a lot of worry with this pregnancy. Um, she had great support from the hospital staff, you know, a number of visits and whatnot. I can't believe eight months went that quick. I really can't believe eight months went that quick, actually. I still thought she had like two or three months left. Nope, she only had one month left. So, yeah, I'm an uncle again. <laughs> um, obviously... I'm going to have to stay in hospital for a little while at least, just to make sure everything is okay. Uh, yeah, anyway. That's the good news. Now, <laughs> my leeway delivery bike. So me, in my infinite wisdom, and the fact that I just love lights and things, and I've always wanted to add extra lights to one of my mopeds. So... I did that with the leeway. As I've mentioned in a previous video, I added 
LED lights around the top box. I had two red ones on the back, two amber ones on the side, and then a red and white side marker on the sides as well. And they just operate from a switch inside the top box, which is also the feed for that is also fused, and I've got a master switch on it as well. Um, yeah. Um, but the three front LED lights, the day running LED light that I stuck on the front and the two amber sides are wired onto the low beam. You know, so it's on all the time with the low beam. But I've recently discovered that one, when I indicate right, the LEDs blink, and at first I just thought that was, you know, a bit of a power drop, you know, with the indicator on. But it's not. The reason I found out that it's not is because on my way to Mum's the other morning, I was riding through the woods and I came across quite a lot of thick tree branches and things across the road. And I just didn't want to leave it there because I didn't want another biker to come through there and hit one because it wouldn't be a nice thing to hit. So I stopped, put the hazards on, kicked my side stand down which shuts the engine off. And as soon as the engine shut off, I noticed that the LED day running light and the side lights were flashing with the hazards. But they don't do that if the engine is running. They're steady with the engine running. So it's got me baffled. I don't know if there's some back feeding there somewhere. But I came off the wiring loom for the headlight. For my power and neutral, it came off the loom for the headlight. I didn't go anywhere near the two indicators. Um, what I will do on a nice day when I've got some... If it's nice tomorrow, I might. I'm just take my panel off and just have a quick check under there. But it had me baffled for a while, but the only thing I can imagine would be it's back feeding from somewhere. But surely with LEDs, it should only be lighting up one way anyway. But, you know, I can't really have the hazards on with a big white LED flashing on the front. That's not strictly street um, road legal, so... I mean, I'm probably not going to use the hazards often, and I could just get around that by leaving the engine running and put the bike on the centre stand so the engine stays running. Uh, but I think it's going to bug me if I don't try to do something about it. Uh, I suppose that's what comes with owning a Chinese bike. They're going to do weird and wonderful things. <laughs> I'm going to be wrong. I absolutely love that. I've got all these extra loads on it. Um... I don't always use the rear ones. I do if the weather is bad, like today when I had to ride home in the pissing down of rain. Which I actually discovered doesn't bother me as much as I thought it would. Probably because I thought, well, I'm going home, if I get wet, I can just take my clothes off and change when I get home, can't I? <clears throat> that was, that's my general way of thinking. I wouldn't do it, you know, going from here to mum's, because I've got nothing to change into. Unless I stick something in the top box. I suppose I could do that. I could just stick something in the top box. I can hear you over there. Oh, I know where you are. I was just going to say I could hear my... Oh, it's smudge. Using the uh, wooden box. Nemo's old box. You good boy. Well, I say good boy, he, he is most of the time. He has his moments. You know, he's a typical older brother. He's got to wind up his sister. He's on me lap now. Can I reach over when I make him get off? Yep, yeah, there he is. <laughs> I'll tell you what, my cats, neither of them are much of a lap cat. I jump up occasionally. Stowey does it rarely. She's really not one for cuddles unless it's four o'clock in the frickin' morning, and I don't know why. I'm not kidding. Two mornings this week in a row, between four and four thirty, she's been up on my bed wanting cuddles like smudges now. 
Not during the day like this, not at a reasonable hour, no. She's got to be an awkward woman and do it at stupid o'clock in the morning. I'm glad there's no women here because I've probably got a punch for that one. <laughs> Anywho, should we have a look at some stuff now? Now I've got the uh, chain bits out of the way. So, I was just browsing eBay randomly, not last week, the week before, and I came across some Dorman Smith Traffy Lamp E types, the square metal ones. And I wasn't going to get them at first because I thought, oh, I've got a shelf full of the damn things anyway, and I've got three up here as well. But then I noticed I had something on these that none of mine have. And that's actually a company name. I don't mind buying duplicates of lamps I've already got if they've got a company name on that I don't have. Don't ask me why. In my mind, I just consider that as a variation of that lamp. So, I forgot these have got the batteries in still. So, this one's got Transco written on it. And Transco, back in the 1990s and early 2000s, was a contractor for British Gas. I believe it's Caden now, isn't it? Well, at least around here it's Caden. I still see some National Grid vans, so I don't know if National Grid do it elsewhere around the country. Anyway, so I've got one with Transco on it. I don't think that's the original sticker. I've been told it's not by another collector, and to be honest, that one doesn't look like the same material as that one anyway. But I'm not bothered, I just like the fact that it's in reasonably good condition, apart from a dent up top here. And it's got that on it. I'm quite late. Oh, actually. They could actually be original, because of them. The other one is actually reflecting. Oh, they are. Oh, I'll put the wrong side and not They are reflective. I didn't think they were reflective. Anyway, here's the other one. That's just got British gas on it. I think this one was missing the internal circuit bit, which I wasn't bothered by because this one was obviously cheaper because of that. And I had two spares in my cupboard anyway. But when I was in there looking for the uh, circuits, I totally forgot I needed a burner for this uh, paraffin lamp that I've got. And that I got from the Carbu, Alstrom Carbu, couple of weeks ago. Nearly three weeks ago now. See I got this one. Smudge has dribbled all over the arm of my chair and I just stuck my arm in it. He's got this thing for dribbling when he uh, purrs and I don't know why. Anyway. Yeah. So I totally forgot about that. Okay. It's not in there. <laughs> I thought it was. What I'd done, I'd made a little light thing to go in there. I buried it down here. This is where the lamp... Ah, here it is. I found it. That's what I put together. Just something very simple, cobbled together. And a little lamp holder with a screwing bulb in the top, 6 volt. That's just hot glued to the top. And that switch is just hot glued to the side. The reason I did it that way and not that way because the lamp holder is higher and it's more in line with the lenses when I stand it in there. So four AAA batteries, six volt, as simple as that. The uh, battery pack actually came out of a uh, defunct LED bike light. It was actually one from Lidl's quite some time ago now. Um, so you could take the battery pack out of it like that, you could put your double A's in, then you put this back in your light and put your cover back on. So where these push onto is just two little metal tabs that I bent outwards so I could glue this on and push the wires on. So now if I actually don't feel like lighting up any burners, because I have got more of these kerosene lamps up there, or paraffin lamps as we call them, I can just do that pop it in here, I 
I've got a funky little night light. <coughs> Don't look too bad actually, not even with all the lights on. So that don't fall over and get broken, and probably so I'll forget it's there again. I'll put it over there. Yeah. Right. Now, the next lamp is actually one a friend of mine on Facebook linked me to. That was on eBay. Um, the very same friend that I've bought some lamps from this year. Know, about half a dozen lamps I think I've bought from him this year. He sent me a link. This. Um, it is a British Telecom, I suppose, work lamp, is what I would describe it as. Um, it's actually got the old Telecom T on the bottom. I think the yellow and blue colours were 1980s, if memory serves correctly. I can Google the history of BT and find out, but I believe, I know it was in the 1980s, but I think it started in the 1970s. <clears throat> Pardon me. Now, I've been watching this for three weeks before I decided to buy it. Because, um, the seller wanted 29 99 for it, plus the postage. Um, so I was just watching it. I was going to buy it. I was just biding some time, basically. Um, and then I found an email from eBay saying the seller had reduced this to $19.99. So I thought, you know what, I'll go for it. So here we are. I did have to tinker with it to get it to work. But it does work. Just twist this to turn it on. That took me a lot longer to work out than I care to admit. I think I sat here for about half an hour trying to figure out how to turn it on. There might have actually not been anything wrong with it. It might have just been me. Um, but it takes three D-cell batteries, which you just twist this bottom off. I accidentally broke one of the locking tabs for this. So I was trying to figure out if there was a right way or a wrong way to do it, and there is actually a right way to do it, as I found out the hard way. You know? Never mind. Probably notice we've got the spiral cable on the back. Um, now, I thought this was a funky feature, because I couldn't figure out what this was at first. Um, because you're probably thinking, how do you change the bulb if it blows? And there is actually a spare bulb in here. Well, that doesn't unscrew, but what you do, pull this out, like that. Turn the lamp on as well while you're at it. So that's what that is. And that then allows you to go, boop. There you go. Bulb and a spare one. It's as simple as that. So the switch mechanism is also simple. I mean, it's pretty much just those two raised bits. So when you turn it, those raised bits just push down on the light bulb and make connection. And then when you turn it far enough, it releases the bulb and releases the connection. And that then just pushes in like that. And you simply just get your, I suppose, lock, and that just threads in, like that, and oddly, that won't come out of there now, but <laughs> it's really secure, secure, when I can speak. Now the other feature with this, I mean, it's got a belt clip there, it's got a clip on it as well, I suppose you could clip it anywhere it would clip, not just your belt, so this light head does come off. Um, and at first, I didn't notice this. I was actually just taking this handle off altogether because it's quite springy. Then I realised these two like little nubs that stick out there are actually designed with a purpose. So when you do this, you pull your handle down, and make sure they just lock in, and that spreads the handle out so you can do that. So now you can sit that on the floor on your belt buckle or whatever. You know, if you're having to go up a ladder and up on the telegraph pole, then you could clip that, I suppose, on your shirt or something like that, couldn't you? So you've got the light up there, where you need it. So I actually think this is quite a good design. 
Now it's uh, got itchy, itchy snozzle. Um, it's made by Oldham and Son Limited. Uh, let's try to find it. Denton, Manchester. My light head won't clip in properly in there. Why are you being a... Got one side to go down properly, now the other side won't. There we go. Alright, that's it. So when the handle's up like that, it just locks this in place. Yeah, um, what was I going to say? Can't remember. But anyway, I posted a photo of this up on one of the uh, barricade lamp groups on Facebook and one of the members replied saying he's got a red one of these back when the telephones were managed by the post office, or GPO as it was known back then. So the body is all red but it's got that bit in black and that bit in black. So I um, did a group search for this guy's name and found the post. can't remember his name off the top of my head. DJ something or other he goes by. just thought it was quite interesting. But I bet that red one's quite rare to find. But, uh, this is now one of my favourite torches or work lamps, whatever you want to call it, in my collection of various lamps. And while on the subject of lights, two more to go through. I found this in a charity shop the other day. I'm pretty certain it's missing a bit because we've got that there with thread, a threaded bit in the middle. Um, we'll just plug it in. It's USB powered. And for this, I'm going to use my uh, USB do it in here. So it's plugged in. I'll just control. You just have to press it twice to turn it on when you first plug it in. So I don't know how well you can see that, but there is four stems. And there's red, blue and white LEDs. It's quite a warm white LED in there. So when you first turn it on, you get all three colours. And if I press the power button again, one goes off. Actually, every time you press the button, one will go out. See? Until you're left with none. Press again, they'll all come on. Uh, there's also brightness controls. I've seen that going dim, that's the dimmest setting. It's actually more noticeable when I've only got one of the colours on. There's also a timer for 4 hours, 8 hours, and 12 hours. You can also do this. So if you just want the white light, you could have the white LEDs on. But you can have the red and blue. And you can have them all on. That's all the features I can find on this with this little control. The only bugger is to turn it off, you've got to press the button four times. There is no like on off switch. I hate designs like that. I'd rather just have an on off switch and then a button to select everything or a set of buttons to select everything in this case. Yeah, I like that. I'd, I want to put it above the bed. So I'm going to take a couple of the lights off that I've got there already and hopefully put this up there. Just as a bit of a mood lighting, I suppose. Because I do often fall asleep with lamps and things on. Um, but I need to make a bracket. So, I did go to the store earlier and I bought these. Just a packet of these two metal plates. I'm hoping I could drill out one of these screw holes so it's big enough so I could bolt that to that. Yep, that will actually work if I can drill the hole out. I may not even have to drill the hole out, actually. That might be the right size. Um, but then it would leave me two screw holes to actually screw this to whatever. 
I suppose if I needed an angled one, I could just go back to Roy's and find an angled one. You know, if I want to bolt it to a wall. Well, no, it might actually work like that, wouldn't it? I could do it that way. You know, that on the wall and that bolt to it. The only thing is, I'd have to put some washers down here. Because obviously, your bolt head's going to create a bit of space. But I'm hoping, maybe my box of bike bits over there, that's got to go back to the workshop. I'll have a bolt in there that will fit this. I hope. But that'll be a job for tomorrow, I think. And then I found three of these today. I just had a quick look around the charity shops. These are um, little golf balls. Incandescent lamps, 25 watt. Now I've seen coloured golf ball lamps before. I've got a load of them in a box in the kitchen up on the worktop. But I've never seen ones like that. These remind me of the old fire glow bulbs. I used to get 60 watt fire glow bulbs that were coloured in the same pardon me, way as this, but yeah, that's why I bought these. They're 50p each, and there's only three of them, so I thought I'd get all three. I've not actually powered them up yet, so I have no idea what they look like. Don't even uh, recognise the brand name of them either. Energy rating of E. <laughs> Worst energy rating you could get. But, uh, you know, in fairness, if you're just using these for decorative purpose, it doesn't really matter. But, uh, I think these old filament bulbs, they're at that point. Like a lot of obsolete things, you know, whether it be toys or other technical gadgets and whatnot, they always get that point where they become worthless because nobody wants them. But as time progresses and they get rarer and rarer and people feel more nostalgic, they then start creeping up in price and becoming more collectible. One of the reasons I do buy unusual lamps like this as when I come across them. Because there are actually a lot of uh, lamp collectors out there collect like bulbs and things. On a side note, that's one thing that I do like the internet for. You know, because without the internet, you'd, most of us would probably still think we were the only ones, you know, that had that interest. I mean, pretty much before the internet, I thought I was the only one that collected road lamps. Well, I kind of knew that I probably wasn't the only one, but you know what I mean. But, you know, with the uh, invention of the internet and people able to easily communicate with each other and whatnot from around the world, you, uh, you do learn quite a lot. And you do find that uh, there's a lot more people interested in your unusual hobbies than you might think. I think that's what I thought, really, you know, that if there was others that there wouldn't be many of us at all out there. I've, there's quite a lot on our groups. I think we go into triple figures at least. I wish Smudge wouldn't do that. He keeps going through the um, flags and the one gets stuck to the back of the fan and that makes a horrible noise. Anyway, should we have a look at some die cast? I think it's time to look at some die cast. So, might as well start with what's on the desk. Just the camera down at the desk. I'm going to bring the camera closer actually. Because a lot of the time it's far away and I end up reaching like that with my arm to show the camera. Anywho, I'm going to start with the three models that I've found on Marketplace. Now these. Don't know if I actually want to tell you how much they cost, but uh, anyway, 
cost me 75 quid just for these three lorries. But now I found out a bit more about them, I think that was a good fair price. Um because they do seem to be rare. You know, I've posted them on the Diecast Scrapyard Facebook group. I'm going to post them up on um, the Matchbox one that I'm on. But there's a lot of people that said they had never seen these ones before. Um, I have never seen these ones before. And these are also mint. There's not a mark on this or the car. There's a bit of dust, so they could do a like, bit of a clean down, but whoever had these before me really did look after these. They're mint. We've got the Valvoline one, Panasonic, and Mackenzie. I actually think these two are my favourite out of these ones. They really are nice looking little sets. I mean, even for the more common versions of this particular Matchbox truck, they're not cheap. If you've got one in, you know, near mint to mint condition, they're not cheap to buy. Even unboxed ones. Um, so if these are actually quite rare versions of them, I think I actually paid a fair price for them. You know, every once in a while, it's nice to treat yourself. And it's just nice to have something mint in the collection. I've always said, you know, condition doesn't bother me that much. Um, but on the odd occasion, I'll see something I like. And I'll just treat myself, you know, and have something nice and mint in the collection. Anywho. The diecast guy's stuff. So he sent me a message Sunday. So he got bunch of stuff you know and sent me a bunch of photos of it was I interested and I said yeah I can see stuff that I'm interested in um, can't actually buy any until Wednesday but do you mind if I pop over and have a look and pick some out so he said yes yeah. so I did that Sunday afternoon picked some out he put them to one side and I went and picked it all up yesterday so we've got these three Del Prado cars right here the Porsche 930, the Renault Dauphine, Dauphine, I don't know how you pronounce that one, and a Chevy Corvette. Now I have actually got a bunch of these Del Prado cars. I've actually got one on the floor down there, which I got from Alshon Car Boot. Um, yeah, I bought them as a job lot, I think, last year. Again, found on Facebook Marketplace. Um, I think I paid something like 20, 30 quid for like 30 odd cars or something like that. It was cheap. Um, but all the, most of the packaging was all squished. Um, but what I ended up doing eventually is um, I sorted out the models I wanted. I've actually got those separate. Not on the plastic prints, like plinths rather, not prints. Because I don't like displaying them on these because it just takes up a bit more space on the shelves so I just take these off and dispose of them. Um, I was going to say that obviously devalue the models but in my recent experience there's not much of a value to these anyway. Um, so yeah I kept sort out what I wanted and what I didn't want um, and last year, when we had a yard sale over at Mum's, I took them all over there to try and sell them, didn't sell any. And I sat in the shed for ages and I brought them back here and finally, um, over the last two weeks, I stuck them up on eBay. I think there might have been sort of like eight or nine of them I had up on there and all of them sold for just not much, like 99p, maybe two quid. Um, I mean, I did take them out of the grubby, squished boxes because I just thought they looked horrible anyway. You wouldn't have been able to display them like that, so I just thought it'd be better off just taking them off. So that's what I did. I left the plinths on them, though. In fact, I posted the last one today, which was a Chevy Camaro convertible. So I had a few duplicates as well. 
But I think these Del Prado models are actually quite nice. I mean, there's a good bit of weight to them. And they're not ridiculously light. I can just realise there's four more down there. And I may have actually already shown you them. I can't remember. Let's do a close look at the Corvette. I mean, he had a few more of these there, but these are the three that I actually liked. So, there's the Renault. That's how it's, the word is spelt. Well, I'm just not sure how you pronounce it. Dauphine would be my get. That is Smudge, by the way. He's rolling over and hitting the tripod leg. Right, let me look at what else I got. I got a lovely dinky sweeper. Apparently this is the later version of it. I've got the um, earlier version. They had a few cab colours. I think mine's got the orange colour cab. Like a dark green body. But this one, it's still got its drive belt to drive the brushes when you move the rear wheels. Look. Isn't that cool? It's still there and still working. And the other difference with this I've noticed is that the doors don't open on this one. I'm pretty certain they open on the other one. Uh, and I picked up this, which is complete. I'm actually certain I've actually got the truck somewhere, but I think it's missing the plastic bit to put the tractors on. And this has got two tractors with it. I think I like four of these bloody tractors now. It's not in uh, the best of conditions, not in the worst of conditions either, but it has got some marks here and there. But I'm pretty sure I have got that truck itself. I like how he put the elastic bands on there just to keep the tractors with it. And the other transporter I grabbed was this one. Apparently that Capri goes with this truck. It fits on there perfectly. I know Matchbox did a green truck. It doesn't look exactly the same as this. It's green. But it does use the same method for the uh, ramps on the back. That isn't actually in bad condition at all. Even the uh, Ford Capri is nice. Uh, just a random matchbox caravan. An opening door. Just thought that would be nice to display behind one of my Super Kings cars. And we've got a Corgi Jaguar. 2.4 litre, that's all it says on the bottom. Not in bad shape, I think the antenna is snapped off of there. A little Fire Chief car. Uh, I'm going to double check, but I think I've got this over on the shelf. But I just want a second one anyway. Corgi Ford Cortina police car. Just say what mark this one is. Hang on, it'd be a Mark III, wouldn't it? Yeah, of course it would be a Mark III, because I've got a Mark I down there. The Mark II, yeah. It'd be the Mark III. Yeah, I'm going to double check, but I think I have got, pretty certain I've got another one over there. And sticking with the Ford theme, and Corgi, got that one, which is in lovely condition. I really need to get my display space sorted. I've got so much die I'm going to show you in a minute. I've got so much die cast sitting about in here. It's ridiculous. Right. I'm going to have to glue this bloody wheel on here and the tire on. Nice little matchbox Massey Fergie tractor and trailer. Bit of paint missing on the trailer, but it's not in bad condition. 
put the tyre on the wheel on the track side of the track that's facing me, so on this side. That one. It keeps dropping off, so I'm gonna have to super glue that thing on there because it's gonna get right on my nerves. Um now, I know this one is the second one of these I've got, but this one is in pretty much mint condition. Might have a tiny little mark on it here and there. Although I've not really noticed anything. Oh, yep, yeah, tiny little bit on the chest and the base of it there. So near mint. My other one, if I remember correctly, is actually um, a little bit rough. I've also got the purple version in pretty much the same condition as that. Now, I have got a couple of these, but my others are in rougher shape. This one, again, is in mint. Matchbox regular wheels Mercedes. Does it say what Mercedes it is? base needs a polish, I can't see it. I know they did um, this in a different colour with the super fast wheels, which I've got a few of as well. <laughs> but that, yeah, that is mint. That is a lovely little car. And then again, I've got this one just because it's in super duper condition. Not that I really needed another one, but this is in the best condition out of all of them that I now have. Little Dodge D100. We then have a Dinky Toys here. It's the um, Volkswagen 1600 TL. Matchbox also did their version of this. I'm pretty certain it's rear engine. I mean, all the doors and the bonnet and the trunk and whatnot open, but there's no engine at either end. See? There's nothing in that end, and there's nothing in that end, so I'm just assuming it's fallen out. And I'm assuming, again, being Volkswagen, I don't know much about these, but I'm assuming the engine would be in the rear. Um, and it has got what appears to be a spare tyre in the front, so yeah, I, I'm going to say that the engine went in the rear. That, it's probably a feature that's fallen out of this, because I can't imagine Dinky would have just left that out. Um, I have to say, I've got a thing for collecting dinkies at the minute. Now, I've got another little Lone Star here. Flying something or other, I can't read it, but it's a Maserati Mistrali, I believe. Did I say Maserati? It's Maserati, isn't it? Not Maserati. It's in nice condition. I've got a thing for spot on as well, but they're quite rare um, and quite expensive especially if you want one in as good condition as this uh, but worth it I think because they are nice little models now this is something I've not seen before it's a Chevy Chevrolet Chevy 2 it's made by Dinky and it's actually got mini Dinky written on the um, base I didn't know Dinky actually made anything this small. I always thought they just made cars, you know, and models on this sort of scale. And that is in decent condition. But apparently they're not that common. So I've been told. That is a lovely looking little model either way. It's not mint, but still, it's nice. Right, that is... Uh, it from the diecast guy. It looks a lot less than it actually is. Right, I'm just going to move this actually. Swing that in there. Cortina in the trailer of the tractor. Now. 
Now a lot of these, especially that Matchbox Mercedes, I'm going to put safely over there with all my other good stuff. I don't just chuck them in a box like I've got a lot of the other stuff. Although what I tend to do when I'm storing them in the boxes, they're actually stacked in like that. I don't chuck them in. So I just layer them up like that as best I can. That way I just find it preserves the paintwork. Oh, and actually before we get into that box, that reminded me of something I wanted to talk about as well. These transports I want to get on the display. I really just need to pull my finger out and get stuff done. <laughs> Rather than just complaining that nothing's getting done. Right. So. Someone put a post up on the classic, not the classic, on the diecast scrapyard group on Facebook, where he'd found one of these in a charity shop and he'd taken a photo of it. And he put like one of their string with a cardboard price tag on it. And they put it up for 15 quid. Um, and it was actually in worse shape than this one. Now I can tell you now, I did not pay 15 quid for this, not even close. In fact, I've got another one in just the same condition as this. But even if I put the price I've paid for both of them together, it's still nowhere near 15 quid. Um, now, I know it's a charity. I know they're making money for charity and whatnot. And although their overheads are, from what I've been told, less than the average standard shop business you know because they're charities and they get reductions and things um, I still got overheads to pay and whatnot but 15 quid is taking the pee but uh, what they tend to do they use eBay as a guide but they don't use eBay correctly what they do they We'll just type this, for example, you know, Matchbox Audi into eBay search and then look at what people are asking for them, you know, the buy it now prices. And then they'll just sort of pick an average from that and go by that. That's not the right way to do it because, you know, what they're asking for their models isn't what they're necessarily going to sell it for. Which is why I very often find when I'm perusing eBay, I see items on there that have literally been on there for years. Because the price is just too high and they're too stubborn to lower it. Um, the right way to do it is actually how a shop owner I bought a load of Vanguard's models from did it. So he had, he might even still have some in there, I've not, I've not been in there for a while, but he had a load of Vanguard's models up for sale and I went in and you know grabbed a load but he didn't know what they were worth I know the guy as well um, so he uses eBay as a guide but what he does he searches for what items have sold for he does the sold search because um, that gives you a better idea of what they're more, most likely going to sell at. Because it shows you the buy it nows, what they sold for as buy it nows, as well as the auctions. Um, and he sort of went for the average, which was £10. You know, which I thought was quite a fair price for boxed models like that. Um, of course, it's going to depend on the model, how desirable it is. Again, whether it's boxed or not. But yeah, but it seems quite common that, you know, whoever does the pricing in charity shops, because I know it happens quite a lot in our local charity shops, they literally just do that eBay search and go for probably the first one they come across, which is a buy it now. Because obviously they don't want to sit there for hours on end just perusing all the bloody adverts, do they? But anyway, should we have a look at this? Tub. Now, obviously there's not as much in here as there was because I've taken all, well, I was going to say tat out of it. It's 
ideal car boot fodder, you know, if you just want a box of random toys to put out on your car boot stall for the kids, that's ideal. You stick it out there, 50p. That's what a lot of car booters do. Um, that's what charity shops do as well. Oddly enough, it sells. You know, when the kids go there, Mom, I want this, it's 50p. If there's any parents watching this, they're probably nodding their heads as well. <laughs> right, so there's the top. It was full to the top, so I've pretty much sorted out half of it. Um, I want to keep this, even though I haven't got a cab for it, I want to keep it. I have no idea who made it. And apart from being dirty, And what not. It doesn't look to be too bad. And it looks like it's more for, you know, this scale model. Maybe a bit bigger actually. You know, something like that. Oh yeah, that Capri actually sits on there quite nicely. Yep, so you could get should get about three of those on there. And three on the bottom as well. That is actually die cast. That's the only bit of plastic on here. But there's no brand name or anything on it. Well, there's something in the circle there. I can't read it. It's too small for my eyes. But I guarantee it says Made in China on it, even if I can't read it. Right, actually, I've got a mint version of that, so... I don't know if I'm actually definitely going to keep this because I haven't got anything to put in the back but we've got truck minus a body <laughs> MAN truck actually no what put that down there we have a Majorette tow truck it's like Majorette versions of the uh, Matchbox one although they went a step further and made the tilt hood on it <laughs> there's a Kenworth as well wheel that you roll. Um, I can't see no winch on it but I'm assuming a hook hung on there of some sort. It's the only bit that's missing, the hook. And again it's just a bit dirty, it just needs a wash. But that's majorette. Got another majorette here. Can't remember what that was. Made in France. This has got JP4 written on it. There's a few sort of generic made in China models in here that I kept just because I liked them. You know, like that one. I believe it was a Camaro. I'm not sure, but I think that's meant to be a Ferrari of some sort. Cheapy toy Unimog fire engine, but I quite like that one, so I've kept it. I don't know who made this. I've actually just got it to clip together. But I liked it, so I'll give that a clean up as well. A lot of this needs a clean up. I don't know what the car is, there's very little info on the bottom. Uh, another double decker bus for the box. Not found any of these for a while. Maisto here, which I think I've already got. So once I've double checked that, that might go in the charity box. And a little matchbox caravan. Uh, I do believe these actually do go together. It's a shame the tractor unit is not in better condition. But I know this is actually part of a set. I'm pretty certain a bulldozer went on the back of that. Uh, a Corgi Transit Wrecker, which has got blue windows rather than the clear. 
I don't think my other one has blue windows. I'm missing a hook, but I'm sure I could clean that up and find a replacement. Now that is a matchbox. Pretty hot or not, I want to clean it up. We'll see if some IPA or something will take that ink off. Because it's a base swapper or something, because you can do this with it. Just pop the base off. Why you would want to do that, I don't know. It's all plastic as well. It's something I've never seen. I just want to see if I can clean it. I won't keep that to the one side. I'll just put it back in here. Um, another one of these. I'll say another one because I've got like three or four of these now. Give me some minutes because I have got these shell tankers to go with them. Another matchbox. Matra Rancho with Surf Rescue written on the front. Uh, old Hot Wheels race car. This is my second Matchbox Blazer in this design. Got a Corgi Scout car here. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep that one or try on eBay or what I'm going to do with that one yet. I don't think this trailer actually goes with that Majorette truck, but it fits. We've got another Hot Wheels here. Corvette. And another one of them sort of Chinese generic ones, which I was going to keep, but yeah, I'm going to chuck that in the charity shop box. Or pile, I should say, because I haven't got a box for it. I thought I did. Jeep Cherokee. Or Cherokee is what I used to call it when I was a kid. It's a Jeep Cherokee! A little, uh, Generic made in China Ferrari. I've got the Maisto version in here as well. Is it the Maisto version? Yes. That's what that's meant to be anyway. A copy of the Maisto one that was done. We've got a Matchbox Corvette here. It's not in bad shape, really, that one. Ain't got much more in here, don't worry. Matchbox dumper. Dime a dozen. Uh, I'm not sure the brand of this one, but it's a BMW Z8 or Z8. Z8 actually sounds better. Pink Cadillac. Alfa Romeo. I don't have a decent one of these and I've got like three or four of the poxy things now. I don't know why, but kids just seem to love to either draw on them or just totally wreck them, so I haven't found a decent one yet. I've got a Porsche. And I've got a sheep and a pig in the bottom here as well for some reason. And that is it. And that be everything. stuff. Actually, a couple of the items on here. Can go in. Uh, such as... I saw it a minute ago. Oh, buried it. That dinky won't hurt. That can go in here. Some of the boxes I've got over there are actually overflowing, so they can go in here as well. Sort out. So there's that box. I'll put it down here. So I'm going to just rotate the camera around and try and rotate the screen without hitting the stop button. So I've got two boxes over there. I 
cardboard box and a big plastic tub, as you can see, overflowing. And I've got another cardboard box over here. And sitting down here for months. That's like the last, um, at least last three months worth of collecting. Maybe two months. No, it's at least three months. I'm going to get hot now. I've got my big old trailer, I can go in there. Um, oh yeah, I'll show you some of these scrap ones. Well, for some reason there was actually four of these in there and they looked pretty much all the same. They're meant to be a tipper body on these and they're missing on all of them. But I do want to keep all four. But, um, I kept that one simply because it's got a good chassis on it and a good set of wheels. Actually, they might as well go in that box as well. That was a Q-tip. Let's just see if... Uh, I'm going to get this ink off of this car before I shut the video down. Do you get a bottle of IPA like this and that lasts ages. And yes, there is a toothbrush in there. I dropped it in there and I just haven't managed to get it out yet. Working, but I'll be here a long time scrubbing like this. It is working, but yeah, I would be here. Oh, yeah, I'm putting ink on the bottom of that now. I think what I would actually have to do is just put it on there and just let it soak for a bit, like that. Yeah, and then just work at it like this, I think. That's the only thing I can do if I want to clean it up. I was going to take a lot of these Q-tips as well, because I want to get clean tip like that. And he <laughs> smudges on the floor watching me. I don't know what else to do. Right, because obviously I don't want to use anything that's going to damage the plastic. Um. I'm open to suggestions though. I'm going to ask around online as well. Someone might know what I can use. I mean, IPA is working, but that's going to take a while. I don't want to use a brush either or anything like that because I don't want to scratch anything. I don't know. I'll just leave it there and maybe every time I get bored I'll just do a little bit of cleaning on it here and there. Right. I'm going to end the video here guys. So thanks, thanks a lot for watching. If you like the video please give it a thumbs up if you didn't give it a thumbs down and uh, please consider subscribing it's totally free doesn't cost a penny and uh, it just helps you follow the channel and keep up to date every time I upload a video and uh, also in the video description down below um, I'll put links to my other two YouTube videos um, YouTube channels rather not videos um, so I've got the gaming channel and I know you <laughs> and uh, the Lego channel and I've got a Discord server and um, a Twitch channel so uh, feel free to 
check those out and consider following and joining and whatnot. And uh, I will see you all in the next video. Bye. Say bye. Say bye to YouTube. I don't think it's going to say bye. <laughs> say bye. Anyway, I'll see you later. Bye.